Right off the bat, it did not start off really well. It rained and rained and by the time we managed to get to the start of the trailhead, we were soaked. We're doing the Alta Via 1, which is one of the classic trails across the Dolomites. It starts off at the beautiful Lago di Braith and takes us through 121 kilometers of beautiful trails all the way to La Pisa. And we are off kilometer zero of 120 kilometers to go. And this is not the best weather to be hiking in. Uh, it was raining really heavily just now and we thought of cancelling today's hike. But I'm glad we actually went on with it because it seems like the weather is clearing up for the next two hours and after that it will start raining heavily again. Hopefully we get to either a camping spot or a refugio before then. What we eventually learn is that the Dolomites can have some of the most bipolar weather possible. It can rain crazily in one moment and then it can be sunny again. When we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Ah, the sun! Um, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life No camping for today as we decided that it is a much better idea to stay in a refugio since the weather is really not conducive and we are wet. So Amalia, is the food lang, pang or beef? It's beef. What is beef again? <laughs> So tummy's full, proper sleep, it's time for day two. There is an actual airstrip over here. You should fly over there in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And there's some pigs running across the runway as well. <laughs> Back to the tree line. Right guys, so this is Pederu and we have to climb all the way back up there again to Fanes, which is gonna be like I think 600 plus meters ascent. Not a fun day but slightly easier than yesterday definitely. What we eventually realize is there's no such thing as an easy day on the Alta Via one. Every day has its own set of challenges and its own set of difficulties but you are always rewarded with an amazing view. Looking at the weather today, it looks really, really good. So we decided to camp for the night and hike further than Farnes where everybody else is staying. In hindsight though, that seems to be one of the biggest mistakes we made on the trail, but it was a huge learning experience for us. Alright, no trace left behind. 
except for some flattened ground. It's important to leave no trace guys if you're wild camping. So yeah, this was our first campsite yesterday. We were thinking like this is the best campsite ever because it's flat. So pretty. Look at the surrounding. But this became a pool yesterday. <laughs> so we had to move the tent in a hurry. All the way to back over there. What a day. In heavy rain some more. As we edge closer to Tofana de Roses, nothing could have prepared us for what we are about to witness today. That, my friend, could be the hardest pass we have ever done in our lives. And the descent is gonna be really, really dangerous. This is apparently the hardest part of AV1. Going up is just one challenge really because going down <laughs> now that's the real deal apparently this forcella is so scary that some hikers actually choose to take a three hour detour just to avoid it but we're glad that we actually took on the challenge because we were rewarded with some of the best views i've ever seen in my life Another long climb after that, and we are in Refugio Lagazoi, the highest point of the entire Alta Via 1. So here we are at the highest point in AV1, but unfortunately they don't have rooms for tonight or dorms. So I guess we're gonna go towards Refugio di Bona, which is another two hour and a half. And hopefully, maybe we might camp somewhere in the middle. Hopefully, it's all gonna be good. A cute little marmot. Don't let its appearance fool you. This creature actually went through our trash in the middle of the night and ransacked everything. The aptly named Route 404. So just past Refugio di Bona and we're now back in Malaysia. <laughs> no, we're not back in Malaysia. It's just because the place is so muddy, it's like hiking in Malaysia. And it seems we're back in civilization. For a moment. You say let's jump on a bus and take a ride downtown. Well I don't know about that. Yeah guys, can you see that fly over there? He has been on Amalia's backpack. Since when? Yeah, since the Bona, I guess. Yeah, he's hitching a free ride all the way to Avera. Clean the house or clear out some shelves. You said whichever you feel like doing first, I said, well, I don't know about that. Would you believe it guys? This morning we were up there. Our campsite was somewhere around behind that valley over there and then we went through that whole high pass which is Route 404 scary really really scary behind the clouds and then we went down that zigzag I'm not sure whether you can see a zigzag over there to Refugio di Bona and then we went down all the way to the to the road below the valley and then we climbed back up to Cinque Tori, which is over there and Tonight we're gonna head up towards Averao. 
What a journey. About 16k? My goodness. I, I still cannot believe we actually went through that high pass, the 404. That was really, really scary, especially with our 16 kilo of back weight. And if you feel like you want to skip all of that, from Lagazoi, there's actually a wall tunnel that goes down all the way, but it's quite claustrophobic. You go down all the way, and then you can cross, and then so you can skip all of that and go straight to Avera. Mm, I don't know about that. I don't know about It's time to bring on the food! And Amalia isn't kidding. This is the best food we have ever had anywhere in Italy. And maybe Europe. That spaghetti especially is unlike any other spaghetti you will ever taste in your entire life. I highly recommend that you try this. And it doesn't end with dinner. It goes on to breakfast. This place is like one of those Michelin star restaurants in the mountains. Guys, is this hiking or is this feasting? Definitely feasting. Welcome to day 5, where it gets even better. Refugio Avera was so good because they actually have a laundry room. So right now our clothes smells good. Smells like new. Amalia, will you eat at Avera again? Oh, again. I would stay another night or multiple nights really. I will come here. I think I will come here again just to eat and to explore this area. It's so beautiful. I thought today is gonna be an easy day, uh, mostly downhill, I guess. But it wasn't. There's still a few passes we have to go through. But this is for Sela Jiao. It's quite high. Ah, and I'm so tired. I guess there's no easy day on the Alta Via one. Every time we feel like it's gonna be an easy day, it wasn't. <sighs> a lot of climbing. It's like climbing Ben Nevis every day. So guys, we made it to the top of Forcella Jiao, which is 2360 meters above sea level. And we were behind that mountain yesterday, and that's Averao. And then uh, you can see Sinketori is over there. Uh, the day before, we were at Lagazoi, which is over there, and behind that valley. And then we went through that high pass, 404. And then to Dibona, down to the road, and then back to Sinketori, to Averao, and today, we're now at Forcella Jiao and we're heading to... Where are we heading to? I have no idea, sorry. There are a lot of passes. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of passes indeed. Today is a really long day. I'm not heading for the stars Driving down the boulevard at night So it's finally the descent! But unfortunately just now, during the descent, we both felt really really tired and our legs felt like jelly. 
and we're so exhausted. So what happened was we had to set up an emergency kitchen by the side of this trail here, <laughs> next to the cow dung, <laughs> and we cook because the bars are not helping anymore. So we cook the you know the sea to summit. Uh, what is that? Like a dehydrated meal. And the mac and cheese is actually good because we actually hate sea to summit meals. Sorry. They all taste like. Mm. But the mac and cheese is actually good, so kind of replenish us. And now we feel like new persons again, and we can continue hiking, maybe until Paso Staulanza. <laughs> <laughs> and for some weird reason, we managed to reach Paso Staulanza that day. But that's only after we managed to not be attacked by this angry cow. Hello. The cow kept looking at my GoPro and I felt it was unsafe to keep filming, so... Wow, that was scary. He kept looking at us. Like as though he's gonna charge after us. Oh my goodness. So scary. Sometimes when you're hiking for a long time, you may encounter days where the weather is great, everything looks good, but you don't feel really up to it. Suddenly your back feels heavier, you don't feel as fast anymore as you were on the trail before. And today is one of those days. When this does happen to you, you find yourself checking your guidebook, your map, countless times, hoping for some sort of a deliverance. And the best deliverance from it is actually the friends that you meet on the trail. Yeah, it's one of those things I guess when you're into it. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in the, for the PCT, do you have to climb the whole way? Yeah, you don't spare as much money. And you can stop when tell like a baby. And no backpack. No backpack. Such a morale booster. Such a hot stage. This is probably the hottest stage we've ever been on on the AV1, and we kind of underestimated it a bit. So we only carried like one liter of water, and we've now ran out of water. And the refugio is still about a kilometer away. We can see it from here, but like what they say in AV1, whenever you can see the refugio, it doesn't mean that you're gonna reach it very soon. You can see the refugio is over there somewhere. Yeah, hopefully we can get there and without feeling too dehydrated. Let's go! Afterwards, we were in survival mode as it took us another one hour to get to the refugio without any water in our backpacks. The best sound in the world. All right, they ate now, and suddenly it's so foggy. Yesterday was so hot and so dry. Today is so wet and so foggy, and it's gonna rain in a while. You get what you wish for, yes? The weather was on our side as we descended towards Paso Duran, and I'm rather excited to be able to see some sort of a civilization after days in a while. Somebody offered us a lift just now. That was very nice, uh, but we said no because we want to make sure that we cover all the kilometers 
on foot. I think this road section is not going to be that long, so it's okay to walk down and it's also a descent, which is pretty easy. Something that we realised as we ventured further south towards Belluno is the fact that people are getting nicer and nicer and there are hardly any tourists around. So naturally some hikers are quite surprised to see us Asians and we are the only Asians on the trail. But the trail did get a bit more difficult and precarious. There were quite a few rocky traverses that tested our fear of heights and we had to hurry through some of them as there is a forecasted thunderstorm due to arrive soon. Thankfully, we cleared the difficult sections before the thunderstorms eventually hit. Caught in a thunderstorm again. Hi. Seems to be our fate. <laughs> but it's okay, it's not too bad. Made it luckily to Refugio Prampere where there is a much needed hot shower, some hot soup, amazing food, the first chicken wing I had in days, and a fireplace that keeps going. The people at the refugio was also really nice to us. On the day of our checkout, they actually prepared and left some breakfast for us super early in the morning as we needed to leave by 6am. It was a much needed nourishment as we are combining two stages on our last day, our longest day on the AV1. A truly spectacular view to bid us farewell on this trail. For a brief moment, we were at ease somewhat forgot about the thing that was plaguing us for the past few days. The most dangerous section of the AV1, the Knife Edge Ridge. Just a day ago, a group of hikers were nearly struck by lightning on that ridge and had to go down in an emergency and cut short their AV1. We are glad we made the decision to wait another day for a better weather window, as we were rewarded with a safe traverse and some of the most epic views to say goodbye to. The last meal at the last refugio. We are gonna rush. We have two hours to catch the 426 bus and from this refugio to that bus station is actually exactly two hours. So hopefully we're gonna meet the estimation this time and we can catch the bus to Belluno and then onwards to Cortina. Thankfully the final descent is really gradual unlike the descent in previous days and we managed to catch the bus in the brink of time. And we're done, we finished AV1. Overall, we walked a total of 121 kilometers and climbed a total of 7,200 meters of elevation. The Dolomites will always have a special place in our hearts. Amazing landscape, amazing people, amazing food. What more can you ask for?